Hey everybody, it's me, Emily. You can't see my face, but those are my hands. Um, nice to talk to you all today. So um, I got this really fantastic camera stand for my birthday. And um, now that I have it, I'm going to start doing sketchbook tours of all my sketchbooks. So I thought we'd start with my most recent sketchbook and then my Patreons can vote on the next sketchbook that we'll take a look at. I've got sketchbooks ranging from um, well, I've got sketchbooks ranging from like 2007 onwards, but I have moleskins ranging from like 2017 onwards. So uh, we can pick one on a poll and take a look at it. But today we're going to start with the most recent one. This one was started in December 2022. It was finished in April. I just uh, didn't write that, I guess. But yeah, um, to start, the sketchbook is covered with stickers, which is kind of what I do with all of them. Most of these are my own stickers. Um, clearly, we've got the um, Irish carrying as punk sticker or the Clotter Ring uh, carrying as punk. We have the Heartbreaker sticker that was from Halloween. We've got the Angel Devil carrying as punk. Um, those are mine. And then the ones that aren't mine are, of course, the Antisocial Social Club, which is a brand that I like. We have Zine Fest, which is an organization in New York City. Um, I went to one of their zines in January, one of, their zines, one of their zine fests in January. It was super fun. I haven't been able to make it to the other ones, but fantastic time. And I plan on hanging out there um, when the weather gets warmer. And then I have this really cute Antisocial Social Club Shiba Inu sticker from um, Picaro, Picaro? I think that's her name, their name. I'm not really sure, but they're really cool. I met them briefly at Anime NYC, and then uh, during the Black Friday sale, I bought a bunch of Shiba Inu stickers from them because I love Sheebs. Anyway, let's start with the first spread. So, as you can see, I started the sketchbook on December 30th, 2022, and I finished it on April 25th, 2023. That's actually a lot longer than it usually takes me to fill one of these. Um, I was working pretty heavily on Chase Me, and I mostly use larger paper for that, so that's why I had the sketchbook around for like a little longer. Um, I'm gonna blur out my phone number so nobody can see that. Um, but yeah, my contact info is on there if I've ever lost this anywhere. Um, I start all of my sketchbooks with a sketch of Tabby. They're usually pretty free flow and I often do them when I'm like half asleep for some reason so they're not very good but you know she's cute doesn't really matter she's always cute. Um, different stickers that I got at different events last year. Um, Whitney Biennial was last summer and um, these stickers over here are from people who I've met at different shows. Um, I will try and grab their names before I post this, but if I don't, either way, they're super cool. Uh, this is just a sticker from Michael's that I found somewhere. And then this is the wristband that I got when I went to the Fall Out Boy listening party back in March. It was super fun. Um, kind of an elephant in the room here. We have this EMS uh, packaging thing from Bulgaria. Um, those in the know know that I bought a TV from Bulgaria. Um, with the intention of turning it into a display for my art. The TV is super cute. I haven't had a chance to make the display yet, but I'm gonna work on that for like the fall shows, so we'll see. And yeah, more Anti-Social Social Club. And of course, Mocha Fest. This sketchbook uh, partially covers Mocha Fest, which was April 1st and 2nd this year. I was preparing for it from like February on, and you're gonna see a lot of like mocha notes as we go on. So we'll go the first real spread. Um, they just added this like copyright thing, <laughs> or not copyright, this little description for the beginning of all the moleskins like recently. I'm not sure how recent, but like it was, this was the first book I bought with that. So I just wrote that's new because it's a new thing. One of my old stickers, this was actually on my display that I had to tear down for Anime NYC. Um, and the sticker was not in very good shape. So I just stuck it inside my sketchbook. So my very first sketches um, in the sketchbook, they were some of my last drawings of the year. And they're not of characters that anybody really knows very well. Um, it's um, Annie or Anya, um, who is the O'Malley's younger sister. 
and Koji's little sister, Shiori, or Darby as she calls her like fox OC self. It's a little complicated, but it's cute. Don't worry about it. Don't think too hard about it. It's all good. It's all storytelling. Um, super cute. Love them. I drew this while I was waiting to be done with work for New Year's. And um, some of the freebies that I got when I supported people during Black Friday, sometimes artists will send you these cute little cards that like tell you about their work. That's actually what inspired me to make these little cards for Chase Me where I just kind of talk about myself a little bit and like what I do and how spreading the word helps a lot. Um, actually, I'm gonna take a photo of this because this looks like a really cute thing. Cool. Um, you can take a photo during a video now. The future is wild. Anyway, um, they said these little thank you cards. They're super cute. I love them. I collect them. Some of them are in a box. Some of them I tape in my sketchbook. And then this is an adorable little Starbucks card holder. It looks like the Starbucks bag, like if you've got like a pastry and then the gift card itself was shaped like a pastry and that was very cute. So I had to keep it. All right, here's the first real art of the year. Um, you may have seen this picture in uh, on my Instagram or in my gallery like really early in the year. Um, this is two sides of Tabby. I ended up using this sketch, but I didn't use the sketch. I really like the sketch, but it didn't like have the right vibe for the rest of the piece. I started working on a tied one over here and I was starting to run into the same issue of not having the right vibes and then I just kind of gave up on this project. But, you know, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> A little sketch of Tyg and Devlin. Um, they're a little off model here, but they're so cute. Uh, this was an idea for something that I might put um, in the first uh, Chase Me Kickstarter, but I decided against it. I might revisit this piece for the next Kickstarter. And there's more um, Kickstarter sticker ideas here. Uh, Self-portraits, um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this one, None of these are great. These were just sketches for a painting that I did where the sketch looks a lot better and I was um, notably tired and upset when I drew these, which you might be able to tell from the emotion. And then I just started being like, what if I drew my eyes really high up or really low and started exaggerating different things? And I'm like, that's like what Picasso did, but worse. And uh, yeah, whatever, no big deal, fun times. Um, people I sketched on the train, um, lyrics from a song because I you can you can tell there's some emotion here and um uh, it's from a song by the Lawrence Arms if anyone knows them they're kind of a punk kind of a midwest emo band I don't know an old friend introduced me to them and I've always liked their music but I've never really kept up with like their whole deal but I have their whole discography so, you know Another self-portrait, trying to do a nice one compared to the other one. Um, this is cute, I didn't really do anything with it. And then, this is a comic I drew on the train because I just remembered this time when my aunt took me along to the voter registration office and there were just all of these maps of Hudson River crossings and like truck routes and stuff. And I felt like I had just been gifted forbidden knowledge and I needed to share it with everybody. So I just took all of these DOT and Bridge Authority maps and I tried to hand them out to my family, like this was new information, and um, they humored me a little bit, but that was a very special feeling. Revisiting the tags, um, didn't really do anything with this. I like both these sketches, but eh, I didn't really do anything with it. Um, this is a comic idea that I was actually trying to draw yesterday, and um, I didn't really like how it was going, but I wanted to cover it because I think it's funny and I don't want to spoil it. You might see a couple more of these uh, post-it notes throughout the sketchbook. They're mostly there because either it's an idea I don't want to spoil or it's like notes for work and I don't want people to read them. This is a print I'd still like to do. Um, Tabby talking to St. TV Head or TV Head Tabby. And um, the caption says, maybe you should just go to therapy. I thought that was funny at the time, but me it doesn't need the caption. I don't know. I think it's cool. I think I'll definitely come back to this later. Uh, here we are. Um, we've got some Chase Me panels here. Um, this is Crow getting um, unmade by the Nightmare. Um, very good. I was really proud of these. And then over here we have my Lunar New Year sketch with the TV head 
with rabbit ears for Year of the Rabbit. Some more sticker ideas. Um, Manic Pixie Nightmare Girl is a concept I'm probably going to do something with, just like not immediately, but that'll be fun. I think they'd make like a really good sparkly sticker. Kind of similar to this one that I ended up making for Chase Me. Um, it has that like old school glitter effect and that's kind of what I was imagining for Manic Pixie Nightmare Girl. Black with like silver writing and then some of this glitter. More panel sketches from um, Chase Me pages. I didn't use all of these, I used some of them. Um, I like the croc, the energy. More Chase Me sketches. <laughs> I like the energy of this too. I, I love the grasshopper nightmare. Like, I don't know. Whenever I make villain characters, I just end up being like, oh, but I love them and they're idiots. And what if not villain anymore? Um, still villain. He wants to like eat people and like use them. But you know, he's just doing his own thing. And he's got like impeccable taste and fashion as far as he's concerned. And I really do um, appreciate that. Um, I think this is cool. I didn't end up using this for Chase Me, um, but I think it's really cool, and although that's not exactly how Tig looks right now, I might go back and use this as a sticker or like a promo image or something. It's pretty cool. More Chase Me panels. I know I started this video being like, oh, I was using the big paper for Chase Me, and I was. But also, like, once you get into a fight scene, sometimes it's hard to stop drawing it, so you have to, like, keep the momentum going, so you start, like, sketchy, sketchy, sketching everywhere. And I didn't use a lot of these poses in the end, but it got me to where I needed to be, if that makes any sense. And you can see some of my thumbnails up at the top. And time-wise, we're in, like, late January at this point. More Chase Me. This is pretty much what the whole page looks like. I thought this panel was awesome. I wish I could have done the rest of that page better. I'm not totally happy with this transition, but it's pretty good. I really like this panel. And then this is pretty much the art of a whole page, that this whole thing here. Very cool, very nice. This is when I officially designed what the Grasshopper Nightmare would look like um, once he lost all of his power. Um, here he is saying, screw you guys, I'm going home. Um, part of me imagines that he just sounds like Eric Cartman. Like when he's the big grasshopper, he's got this like legitimately terrifying voice and um, imposing voice, messy imposing figure. And then when he's all depowered, he's just Cartman. And I think that's funny. And Nightmare Tag, you know how it is. Um, I was listening to Fall Out Boy on the train because I had just purchased tickets to their new concert. And I forgot the line, New York eyes, Chicago thighs, and I remember being a teenager being like, that's a good line! And then I rediscovered it as an adult and I had to write it down. Um, this is the, the ramblings of a mad person. Uh, this was me trying to figure out the best way to tell the story about how I used to like hide in the wishing well at my Girl Scout leaders so that I could hide from people during tag. It's crazy, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. The, 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 the better story, the sensible version of the story is in the back of the book. Now, here is where Caring as Punk Angel Devil comes from. This is her, that is her original sketch. I sketched this very quickly at work, and then I took a photo of it, and when I went home at night, I did a much better sketch digitally, but um, she's super cute, I love her. I wanna do some other stuff with like Angel Devils. Um, I have some other sketches. I don't think they're in this sketchbook. I, I think they're in the one I just started, but very excited to do more with them. I think they're gonna make for really good uh, t-shirt motifs as well. And then we have um, the um, Saint TV head doing the heart hands, the heart, heart hands, and saying game over. Um, I don't know. I, I've used that game over motif in a couple of Anarchy Dreamers things in the past, but then it's never actually made it to the final cut of anything. So I don't know if I'll do anything with it, but I feel like if you have, if you know nothing about the comic and you just like TV heads, you'd be like, ah, oh, what a cool design. I like that. So I might make merchandise with it or something. 
you can see I was taking my notes here for Mocha Fest um, about stuff to bring and like if I could get a new zine out and stuff like that. Um, I got most of the things here put together. I think the only thing I didn't have was a brand new zine, but I had Chase Me, so like that worked. Um, and then over here is the beginning of Hourly Comics Day 2023, which is was like, I don't know, February 4th or something? Uh, something like that, I don't remember, but this was super fun. This is an idea that I've been working on for a while. Um, part of me was like, instead of trying to draw this perfectly, just do it for Hourly Comics Day. Just have fun with it, make the whole thing, make it messy, make it into a zine. And then if it's good and people like it, you can redraw it nicely. So I started doing it that way. I ran out of time because that's how early comics day is if it's a work day. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have a full-time job outside of comics. And um, this was super fun. Um, I think a lot of like, a lot of like me comes through with this comic. Like sometimes when I work on a finished piece, I'm always looking at references. I'm looking at how other people do things. So it's like a filtered version of Emily, but this one is really, really just Emily on the paper. The weird faces. Um, it gets kind of adventure timey later. It, it's fun. I like it. The story is that the girls are trying to make like official contact with the nightmares that live inside the science classroom. They are round, spherical, and eyeball-y because they are eyes. We've got King Cornea, and um, actually there's, <laughs> I don't want to give away all the eyeball names. Um, I, I sat down in December and wrote all these eyeball puns, and I thought they were so funny, and I might have been a little sleep deprived when I did it, and I still think they're pretty funny, so I don't want to give them all away, but they meet the eyeballs. The eyeballs are over the top and they think they're very important and uh, they say I see instead of I see. You can tell that I uh, had to wipe that out because I had the idea as I was writing the, the letter I and I was like no! Eye puns! They have to use puns! They're ridiculous! Okay so they were able to uh, summon the Ohoriku um, who is the uh, like fortune teller of the eyeballs, who Cecilia really wants to meet. She wants to establish a diplomatic relations with the eyeball nightmares, but mostly she wants to talk to the magical um, like fortune telling one, which is just peak Cecilia behavior to just be seeking out the magical creature that will give her a quest or give her um, information or fun magical toys, something, you know, ghost stuff. The kind of stuff she gets into with the goose, and she's very excited to meet the Ohoracle and um, gets yelled at, and has a good time. But so um, the idea is that the girls all the girls get to ask three questions, and um, I love this panel. I love Adventure Time looking Devlin and Tabby. They're very cute. Um, and part of the problem is they need to figure out if they're each getting three questions or do they get three questions altogether? And if they ask if they get three questions, does that count as a question? Um, unfortunately, when I went back to work on this comic, I was on a train going to a conference and um, uh, the train ahead of mine, um, somebody jumped out in front of it. So, that was a really rough morning and I got stuck on a train for a while and I just didn't really have the energy to keep drawing. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there for the story. I plan to continue the story, but that's what this is. Alright, cool. More sketches. We've got, um, I had these ideas for a while to do, um, like, custom backing cards for the new Caring is Punk, um, like, like, clattering, like, this design, um, pin, and same for the angel devil. I might do it eventually. I've seen some artists do it, and I think it's really cool when they do it, but for me, I think one of my, one of the things that makes my work stand out is that the work itself is kind of nutso looking, but then the backdrop of it is very clean and kind of matchy and minimalistic. Like, I use the same backing cards for everything, and I think that's just something I should stay with for a little bit. Um, that's me. That's the side of my face. I, there was a mirror on my desk and I just started sketching during a phone call. 
This was all uh, text for Chase Me. Um, some of it ended up in the comments, some of it didn't, but I was trying to figure out how to get, how to convey a certain emotion without it sounding out of character for Crow, so I kept rewriting it over and over again until I got something that was closer. When you have a lot of characters, um, sometimes it's hard to like, keep them all sounding consistent and not like each other. There's little things where you can argue that like, you know, groups of friends start taking on the same um, word choices and speech patterns, but then there's just certain things that don't sound like other people. So I ran into that a bit towards the end of Chase Me because um, I realized that I was making Crow sound a little too concerned about what was going on, and I'm like, no, 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 he's just having a great time, that's, that's not his character. When things get really, really bad, he gets really, really sad, but there's like no, there's not the gradual understanding of a bad thing is happening, it's mostly just we're having a really good time, until it gets really bad and then he's kind of crying, but you know, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> Again, working on it over here. <laughs> Um, I really like these drawings. I got a pen that was like just a normal ballpoint pen, but the ink was coming out of it like super nice, like a drawing pen. And I decided to see if I could draw some decent tabbies without any under sketch. And I love these two. Very cute. That's a nice eye. Um, this one was coming out a little funky. I like I, I like this idea and I think I'll do something with it eventually. Um, but it wasn't really getting across what I wanted. And then this was a whole thing. Don't, don't worry about this. Up here though, I had a request during a Discord call to uh, draw the Dream Goose as uh, First Lady Jackie Kennedy, um, but which was like one request because I forgot why, but it was funny at the time. But then it came out to like how would the goose keep up with like the pace of people walking around the White House, so the uh, the solution was a hoverboard. So I'm just drawing all of this while I'm talking to people. I don't think I've seen a hoverboard in real life in like a year, so you know, I only kind of remember what they look like, but again, fun idea, I might go back to it later. Sketches, that is from a comic panel from Chase Me. This is a sketch for a page. This is a really off-model tag, like I wasn't paying attention. I was using a reference and I wasn't really trying to like make it look like tag, but I think it's cute. And then this is, again, more text that I don't want to show you guys yet. <laughs> Chase Me Pages. These are pretty close to how they just ended up being on paper. Like, this hand right here goes up here. I, I use the panel twice for effect, and then that, and then that's the next page. Yada yada. And then this is most of the page after that, pretty much how it's laid out. Um, and then Tig, pretty good, hands are, this hand is huge, rest of one's pretty okay. Um, I wanted to revisit a piece I did in like 2016 of Tig with like all these vines on him, which I think is super cool and I was trying to figure out a way to, to draw it that was like different from how I drew it before, but I also wasn't looking at the original piece, I was just kind of remembering what it looked like, so you know come back to it later. I think it's pretty cool. Um, Tabby and her younger sister, Annie or Anya, depending on how you want to pronounce her name. Um, very cute. This is based off of an image I saw in a magazine. Um, but so, Fever Dreamers. I've talked about this comic a little bit and it's like an Anarchy Dreamers spin-off series where instead of there be instead of the incident being something that happened in the school, the incident is more along the lines of uh, like what we just went through as a society with COVID. Um, so it would be set like 10 years after the event and basically a slice of life following a bunch of people who got very, very sick um, when they were children and are now trying to live their life their lives on the cusp of adulthood. It'd be a lot more of a slice of life. I have several episodes written and it's really fun. And it's one of those things where like, I really wish I could just make art because then I could dedicate some of my day to fever dreamers and some of my day to anarchy dreamers and some of my day to t-shirt design and stuff like that. 
Um, but I assure you, I am working on all of the comics at the same time, and you're gonna see some other cool stuff for Anarchy Dreamers specifically as we continue through the sketchbook. You can see this is two parts of an image I used for uh, a preview for Chase Me episode two. I drew these guys and then I had to draw Crow this way. He's clearly totally out of proportion to everybody else, but I just kind of shrunk him down and squeezed him together a little bit. And then I put him here in the digital version and he looks super cute. I love that picture. Ah, the famous picture. This is my most liked picture ever on Instagram. It's at like 181,000 likes and uh, several thousand comments. And it was trending for quite a while. It's based off of a meme. I drew it very quickly. People liked it. Good times. Um, cute sketch of Devlin. Um, I might use this for something. I feel like that's the theme of a lot of the sketchbook. A lot of ideas that I had to do really quickly. Um, I wanted to get them on paper because I was busy, but I do plan to come back to them. Um, something here with Ty with like him in the front and then like the nightmare version of him and shadow behind him. Again, cool idea. I plan on doing something with it. Don't know exactly when yet. But then up here, I have the thumbnail sketch for this piece, which is the cover of Chase Me Episode 2. And I really like this. And this motif is actually on my giant painting that I'm working on that is on the other side of my studio. Um, maybe I'll edit in a picture of it, but honestly, this painting where it is right now is so big and so awkwardly half painted that it's hard to get a picture of it, but you'll see it soon. Trust me. Um, a list of things I was going to do in a day because I wanted to go to the Edward Hopper show before it closed. I wanted to get reference photos at a grocery store that I used to go to like every day when I lived in a certain neighborhood. And I had to go to H Mart for just like normal groceries. Um, the grocery store had closed. Um, I thought that Yelp was lying to me, uh, but yeah, it had closed in August because the whole block is being like decimated and that made me really sad because it was the best, most disgusting, awful grocery store ever. Um, and the Edward Hopper show was like closing in two days and when I left the house there were tickets available and by the time I got to like the general area of the Whitney, they were sold out for several hours and I was like, you know what? Not in the cards, apparently. A little bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, apparently, I saw a single swan in the middle of the Hudson River, and I do remember seeing a girl waiting for the train with a Shadow the Hedgehog, Shadow the Hedgehog plushie backpack, and I thought that was very cute. Tabby all bundled up for winter. Um, this is a thumbnail for a page for Chase Me Episode 2, which is why it's covered. More sketches, nothing real exciting here. This is a sketch for something that I'm actually going to like do something with later. It's partially based off of, off of a photo that was either shared by New York Nico or like What is New York of just a ridiculous amount of um, caution tape um, all over the entrance to like the NQR station at Canal Street. And it's like, it's, it's like a comical amount of caution tape. And I just thought it'd be funny if like that was all up for like a single nightmare. And there's a couple of dreamer kids who want to get on the train and they're like debating whether they want to fight the thing to get on the train or just go walk to another stop. I have to, so sometimes when you have a comic that's set in a school, you have to like make seating charts for your characters and you have to like write up a class schedule so that it makes sense. And that's what was happening here. That's my eye. Um, and that is a, um, a green punch buggy that is playing Shakira really loudly. And then this is one of the, the grand exciting things to come out of this. Um, I'm working on a calendar for 2024. I'm really excited. Um, for those in the know, I did a calendar back in 2018 and um, I put it together in like November. I technically delivered it a little bit late, like halfway through January because I, I had a death in the family and there was a lot of stuff going on. 
but it was really fun. I've had a lot of requests for a new calendar and I'm like, all right, let's do it. So this year's calendar theme is, I guess it's parallel, wor parallel world. Um, that's like my, my big dumb fun nonsense name for it that I love to give things. But the idea is that it's just the Anarchy Dreamers kids doing stuff in New York City. My intention is to keep the uh, landmarks or the buildings that I'm drawing looking pretty realistic as they actually look. So that the contrast between the characters and whatever ridiculous thing they're doing and the city itself is pretty obvious and interesting. Um, I'm doing that because... I want to practice a little bit. There's a lot of characters who I haven't drawn in color in a while, and I'm getting back into doing Anarchy Dreamers and back into my color comics, so I really need to practice. But also because, like, I don't know, it seems fun. Um, one of the stories for Fever Dreamers has to do with uh, Devlin getting an accountability buddy, which I don't think those are real things, but that was said on an episode of South Park when I was in middle school, and that word has never left my mind ever again. So. Devlin gets an accountability buddy, and it's Olga, and Olga is a very bad accountability buddy. Um, she's a little bit worse than Devlin is, actually. So, um, it is it is a thing that um, Olga owns a uh, green punch buggy, and basically, they're gonna drive it to uh, Lemon Ice King of Corona, which is a real place. Um, if you've ever watched King of Queens, they, they get lemon ices there, I'm pretty sure. Um, I haven't been back since before the pandemic, but um, it's good stuff. And the building is on a corner and it's kind of geometric and cool to draw. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get that picture together and it'll look nice. Um, you can see some of my other ideas and how I might be reusing a couple of projects or a couple of pieces that already exist. Um, like the uh, Palatucci's Pizza, also known as Bepsi picture I did in 2021, and the subway sitting picture that I did in 2021. You know, subway sitting um, is such an odd piece because a lot of people like it. Um, it doesn't sell very well, it, like at cons, but it sells really well in New York cons to dads who work for the city, who see it and recognize the ads on the subway and buy it because they think it's funny and they're going to show somebody. But either way, I really like the piece, so I want to I want to include it. I have some other ideas here. I've worked on a few of them already, and um, we'll see. I'll probably have to show you there soon. Some Kojis. Koji being Koji. I have to practice drawing everybody sometimes because I go through periods of time where I don't draw them. And then I try to draw them, and they don't look right. So it might seem weird and self-indulgent, and it is a little bit, but also it has a reason. Tyg, little off model, but not bad. Um, Tyg being annoyed by people. I drew, I drew these two on the train. I know I used a reference for this, but I drew this on the train. I thought it was funny. This is right after I went to the Fall Out Boy show, or well, Fall Out Boy listening party. And um, it was in a record shop that has a really, really cool uh, used CD and tape section. And I bought a couple of used CDs because my car is old enough where it has a CD player in it. And um, I saw a bunch of really, really amazing CDs that I didn't buy, but they all had like really cool names. A lot of them were really nostalgic, but my favorite thing was how many of these CDs were like like circa 2002 anti-war anthology cds um there was a lot of like insert genre here against bush cds so i figure ty is going to the record shop he's going to buy some used uh some used cds and he's focusing on the united states of ska america which i'm 99 percent sure was an actual um CD that I saw in the store, and then Bagpipes Against Bush, which is apparently a um, an Irish punk rock anti-war, anti-George W. Bush uh, CD. I was trying to draw, draw um, GW from uh, my my mind on the train. I didn't do a very good job, but I think that would be funny. That'd be a really funny album cover. And then here's a sketch for. Um, what for like what I think is gonna be the October piece for the calendar. Um, a sea of people called October Costumes. You can see a better sketch of it here. Um, for those in the know, or well, excuse me, for those who don't know, um, October in New York, we have New York Comic Con, which sees, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of people in the city on the trains and you know thousands of them are in costume and then at the that's at the beginning of the month and then at the end of the month you have halloween which is about the same amount of people running around in costumes so in october like during rush hour you'll be in a busy station and there will be like all of the Demon Slayer characters and half of the Homestuck trolls and just like random people in fursuits just like waiting for the train very calm very normally amongst like regular people so I wanted to do a picture that commemorates that because it's pretty unique and wild so this is actually the view from uh the Grand Central 7 uh 7 train stop I chose this stop because the 7 takes you to the Javits Center. You wouldn't have a lot of people like necessarily getting on or off here to go to the show like, unless they came into Grand Central from somewhere else, but I don't know, the, the station for Javits Center, Hudson Yards, isn't as cool looking and there's a lot of really good photos of this station during rush hour, so I've got a lot of reference images. Um, this is a sticker of that subway piece that I showed everyone before. Um, I like the sticker. It prints it a little darker than I wanted it to, but like, it's fun, like whatever. And then I went to my normal coffee cart and the woman who owns it was making coffee instead of like one of her employees. And she literally made me an iced Americano that was just espresso, there was no water in it. I had no warning. I, I was actually a little bit physically scared to keep drinking it. The, the taste was sour. My heart was going fast. And actually, that's before I cut my hair. My hair is really long in that sketch. Got some tabbies here for good reasons. And we have Tabby here, very cute, asking if you missed her. The reason she's asking if you missed her is because I am working on Anarchy Dreamers again, and I thought it would be fun to just have Tabby break the fourth wall, but not really, and ask if people missed her. She's got her um, cheerleading uniform on with like her gym pants underneath for modesty because she knows she's going to fight somebody. And um, I thought I was going to use this sketch exactly, but the more I've looked at it and the more I've worked on the script, I'm like, ah, that doesn't work super well, but I'll figure it out. But that's the basic idea. Again, the theme of the sketchbook is I have a lot of really great ideas. They don't always have the time to be made the second, but that is why I put them in the sketchbook so that I'll remember them. And then this is the thumbnail sketches for um, Chase Me episode 2, page 1, which is live on Patreon. Now, this is the page that I scribbled all over while I was at Mocha Fest. So, we're now into April. It is Mocha Fest. Um, it is April 1st and 2nd. Um, I am vibing, I am thriving, I'm having a great time at the show, and while I'm there, I'm taking notes about interesting things that I see that I could possibly use in my own business, um, or just things that had, had inspired me. Um, before the show, I had made a decision to display all of my uh, pins and things as collections. I didn't do it super officially, but I made like funny little uh, like post-it notes about it because for some reason at columns, if you make a nice sign before the show, no one reads it. But if you put a post-it note up and it looks like you wrote it really quickly, everyone is incredibly endeared to it and they love it and, and they will read it. Um, so yeah, I named all my little collections things and people enjoyed that, so that was a good thing. Um, I have had, I've seen so many people do this where they put a number next to the print or the sticker so that you can ask someone what they want and they say, I want number 11 and you know what that means. Um, I've never had that issue before because I've always had a display where I can see my prints pretty clearly and see my stickers pretty clearly. But at Mocha Fest, I literally could not see my own board and I kept having to go out like on the other side of the table so people could tell me what they wanted. Um, that's not great. And as I grow my Artist Alley setup, I know I'm going to need helpers. So I need to make things make sense for people beyond myself if I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, ideas for like how to print things, what I might want to do, color schemes, all that, different ways to do the Caring is Punk logo. Um, Something that I saw that I thought was pretty ingenious, but I don't think I feel comfortable spending the money on this is um, 
putting my name and social medias on the back of prints. Like like when you get the prints out of the printer, you do all of them double sided, but the back side is just like a stamp or it looks like a stamp with your name and your social media and stuff. I think you can do the same thing with like an actual stamp, which is more kind of what I'm leaning towards, but um, the, one of the people in my row was doing this. I thought it was such a good idea, but again, for like a two inch square that's basically advertising, do I want to pay another like 20 bucks per print, to, not per physical, not per like individual print, but like per design to do that? Not really. But we'll see. Things do be changing sometimes. My little self-portrait I did in the middle of April. Uh, I think she's very cute. This is, it's funny, I did the sketch before I got my hair cut shorter and then um, I just kept it a little longer because I thought it was cute. My hair is actually not much shorter than this is, honestly, but you know. Um, I really like this piece. I think it's fun. A little Luna here. I was practicing drawing Luna with like much smaller horns or like what would Luna look like if she had if her horns got cut off because like deer lose their horns. I, I don't know. That's I'm not coming I'm not coming out with like weird Luna lore here. I was just like, huh, what if did this? What would happen? Um and then this is essentially the design I did um for the carrying as punk snapback hat. This is not what I, what, this is not officially what it looks like, but this is where I was sitting down sketching and being like, oh, but what if I did this instead? And uh, instead of the like blue and black and white logo, I did just a monocolor. And that was the beginning of something good. Oh, lots of sketches here. <laughs> sketches and weird ramblings. Um, Apparently, um, on this day, I'm going to get to the mid-April, I saw an actual punk walking down the street in St. Mark's. Um, if you haven't been to... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't been to St. Mark's recently, or... Well, I guess if you've never been to St. Mark's before in New York City, it was like the punk place. Like there were punk rockers there in the, like, I guess from like the 70s up until very recently. I remember all the punk shops. I remember it being like the fun, cool, kind of scary place, but you, but not that scary place to go as a teenager um, and into my early 20s. But over the past, you know, I guess it's been like 10 years, but really I've noticed it really bad in the past five years. It's gone from being like the punk mecca to like little Japan, but in like the most like safe, hello kitty kind of way it could become little Japan, which is weird because it was like the punk enclave. And before that it's like the Ukrainian neighborhood, but I digress. So I'm um, seeing like a real punk walking around in St. Mark's is kind of wild nowadays. And um, I rem now that I'm saying the story, I do remember this, and there was like an NYU girl walking a few feet ahead of me, and she literally got out her phone to take a picture because that's how unusual that stuff is nowadays. But I digress. Um, this is really cool. So I was redoing my, my studio, and something fell out of something else, and it had these all these Hello My Name Is stickers that I had written on back in college when I was planning Anarchy Dreamers and my idea was to like write these very vague things that sounded interesting and just have my website and like post them around and I don't think I ever did that because these stickers are not laminated and I figured like they'd run immediately and like nothing good would come of it so I might as well, might as well just keep some of them and then I was also like what if people come to my website and say mean things to me like so I or or get me in trouble for like putting a sticker on something so never did anything with that but I think this is cool it was really fun to find this so I put it in my sketchbook little tabby sketch um some stuff here from uh upcoming um chase me stuff ideas for stickers like a freebie sticker um, I actually just straight up traced a Metro card to make this Caring as Punk Metro card sticker. I think it's cute. I'm definitely going to make this. I just have to find the time. 
um, an idea for a lucky cat sticker based off of my cat, um, with the idea being that you're a lucky cat, you came out of the trash and into our hearts. And then um, that is the rat that the MTA sent packing, except it's me, because this is how I do artist alleys. I'm on the train with my one giant bag and my uh, guitar bag that I put my setup in, and I'm running around through the subway like a little rat. And then there's people in my row who have like a whole like entourage of people, and they look very clean, and like they haven't sweat at all during setup, and their makeup is perfect, and I'm like, mmm, rat time. <laughs> More sketches um, for a business card, or for thank you cards, which is what this ended up being. Uh, for Chase Me, I want to make one from my actual store, and I want to get a stamp made so I can just stamp things. So I don't have to print so much stuff. It's more eco-friendly, but also like stamps are very permanent, and I hate the idea of like making a stamp and then only using it three times. Because I don't... I feel like the best way to be eco-friendly is to not make the waste in the first place, so... Uh, but anyway... And then this was for my little um, YouTube introduction video because I had never done one before and I was like, oh God, how do I do this? And it was like, just do it like it's a Kickstarter video. Talk to people. So I tried my best. And then this was the initial idea for my painting that I'm working on. I've mentioned it before, my giant painting. I'll definitely make a video about this ridiculous piece. I've been taking videos the whole time. So when it's done, I'll do like a whole thing about it. More stuff, more stuff going on over here. Ideas for things I'm working on. I'll get back to that stuff later. And then movie tickets. I saw Renfield and I saw the Mario Brothers movie um, one day after the other. It was really fun. Doesn't look like much, but it's actually a sketch for something that has to do with Tabby and Cecilia. Should be fun when it's done. And then this is the end of the sketchbook. Um, just some sketches of Tabby and Ty. I'm just going nuts here. I tried to do like some serious ones. Ty looks pretty much like himself. Tabby looks not right. And then they, they're, they're so cute. I love them. Little, little chibi babies. Looking good. And then after that, um, there's more pages, but those pages have people's addresses on them because I sold so many hats at Mocha Fest that I had to take orders at the con so I could mail them to people after the show because I had more at my house, but just not physically in the building with me. So I'm not gonna dox anybody, but I had to make like a lot of notes during Mocha Fest. Um, I had to give people information. I had to write down addresses. I had to send things to people. So I ended up cutting a bunch of pieces of paper out of my sketchbook. Um, this is only one piece here, but after this, where the addresses are, there's like four more pieces of paper that have been like physically cut out. I don't like to treat my sketchbooks that way. I don't ever like to cut things out of them. Even if I hate something I made or there's a horrible memory attached to it, at worst, I usually just uh, clip it so you don't see it anymore. But sometimes it just be like that. And yeah, that's it. This is my sketchbook for um, the first quarter of uh, 2023. A lot of ideas, a lot of stuff that seems kind of like wacky and like unattached to things but is going to come back around later into something complete so anyway that's my first not my first that's my first uh sketchbook tour since 2020 i hope you enjoyed it and after this i'm gonna post a little um poll and we can vote on like which sketchbook we're gonna look at next um i'll grab some and i'll make some i'll take some pictures and give numbers and do a poll. Anyway, um, this has been a very long video. I appreciate you hanging out. Um, if you didn't make it to the end and you're not hearing this, like, I don't blame you. It's really long, but if you did, uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Bye!